A little over a week ago, the third trailer for Juniors dropped. It had been almost a year since the last trailer, and for many this would be their first introduction to the game. It looks terrifying, it's visually impressive, the gameplay looks intense, and the character designs are truly unique and frightening. Thus, you can imagine my surprise when upon interviewing Juniors lead developer Ramanov, he told me, I don't think Juniors will be very scary. I don't think FNAF has been scary for quite some time due to how much the formula has been overdone. The Juniors team and I are thriving to make a totally chaotic paranormal adventure adventure with a full-fledged story and character arcs, something I feel many fan games are missing. Oh man, am I excited for this one. Juniors claims to be a mystery game, almost like Clue or Among Us, but set in the FNAF universe. Each night, the player must determine which animatronics are just creepy robots and which ones are haunted as you try to solve the mystery behind the Juniors location. This trailer is awesome! The animatronic designs we've seen so far are truly horrifying, and while I'm not especially interested in FNAF fan games, I found myself drawn to this one. The trailers really do feel like modern reimaginings of the original FNAF ones, but with an incredible new style. These aren't just teasers, we see what appears to be gameplay and it looks great. The fact that this game is built in Click Team is pretty mind-blowing, especially considering there are first-person 3D segments in it. Between the horrifying visuals, the neat twists on familiar designs, I needed to know just what was this game. I reached out to Junior's lead developer Ramanov to speak with them and gleam as much information as I could. I learned about the game's development from its humble origins to the disaster that nearly destroyed the project. I asked about FNAF, fan games, whether Juniors would become a part of the fanverse, and more. Juniors is a very mysterious game, and as expected, Ramanov was tight-lipped about a lot of things. However, I was able to glean some exciting new information about the game, as well as some of Ramanov's personal insights on horror and fan game development. So, with that out of the way, let's be- uh, Oh gosh, it's Mapbot. He won't go away until you hit the subscribe button, so please. In 2020, an old friend of teenage game developer Ramanov's resurfaced onto the internet after a few years of silence, and the two of them got to talking again. Ramanov had been inspired by other fan game developers like Emil Mako and Ivan G, and eventually the idea of making a FNAF fan game came up. They zeroed in on the mysterious Juniors location hidden away in FNAF 6's Midnight Motorist minigame. Late that year, with their game barely into development, the team was made aware of an event called Fan Games at Freddy's, a showcase of upcoming games from fan developers. Having been a fan of FNAF since the age of 10, Ramanov seized on the opportunity and they worked hard to create a trailer with what little progress they had. Junior Juniors got an extremely positive reception upon its reveal at Fan Games at Freddy's. This inspired the team and it also attracted new members. The team grew and they began to work harder. Unfortunately, seven months into development, disaster would strike. With the game a little more than halfway complete, Ramanov ran into some severe computer issues that forced him to place the project on an indefinite hiatus. He dropped his PC off to be repaired with the hopes that they could recover all of his files. If they couldn't, the game might have been cancelled entirely. Nobody wants to start from the beginning again when you were already halfway through the project. Thankfully, Ramanov was able to recover their data and get their computer fixed, and development resumed. The biggest challenge Juniors had to overcome was fitting all of its crazy ideas and segments into a cohesive game. FNAF is still at the core of Juniors' design. I wasn't sure at first whether the game was doing more of a point-and-click style or even a sister location type of thing. However, Ramanov clarified that the core gameplay will revolve around the investigations, analyzing the animatronics throughout the facility and trying to determine which of them are haunted. However, Juniors will be somewhat hub-based, including stuff like this 2D retro retro Bonnie arcade game, and even fully 3D first-person free-roaming sections. For a fan game made in Click Team, it's very ambitious and really impressive. Ramanov compares the game's structure as being somewhat similar to Five Nights at Candy's 3's Dreamscape. It isn't just FNAF and FNAF fan games that inspire juniors though, one needs to take inspiration from elsewhere if they're going to make something unique and exciting like this. Ramanov cites PT and Blair Witch the game as inspirations for juniors. In my personal experience, modern indie horror games can go one of two ways. They can focus on delivering a really quality, scary, scripted experience without much depth to it, or they can emphasize more compelling gameplay at the cost of slightly less cinematic marvel. Oh. I thought you were Vegeta, sorry. <laughs> Poppy Playtime is a good example of the former. Moments like the Huggy and Mommy chases are really intense, visually impressive, and really get your adrenaline pumping the first time around. However, on subsequent playthroughs, you see these scripted sequences for what they really are, roller coaster rides that are mostly on rails. PT is frankly pretty similar as well. It's terrifying, but it's highly scripted. It's not gonna catch you off guard the ninth time you've played it. That's not a bad thing. I enjoy those intense scripted sequences even if they don't really hold their luster. However, I also really enjoy the other type of game where it's more about creating an organically chilling atmospheric gameplay experience. Oh! 
Fuck, 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 it's Vegeta for real. Oh god. Juniors appears to be taking this latter approach. Ramanov explains that they don't think the traditional FNAF formula can be scary anymore. It's just been so overdone. I sort of agree. You can build tension for a little bit, but I really doubt traditional FNAF style gameplay could hold my attention based on terror alone for more than an hour or so. I'm glad Ramanov is focused on creating a more fun, intense ride rather than going for sheer terror and scares per minute. I think there's a lot of interesting stuff for people to explore in FNAF fan games, and I'm glad that Juniors is electing to go in a different, more mysterious, more character driven direction. The character based stuff is some of the most fun fan content we've received. The little characterizations in the FNAF Plus teasers or in the VHS tapes are some of their most memorable parts. It's nice to see that a game is emphasizing those things. Interestingly enough, when I asked Ramanov which of the FNAF games was their favorite, they actually responded Security Breach. While my own opinions on that game are well known, I do think it's exciting that someone who enjoys that more grand story driven experience is working on a more traditional style FNAF game. It feels like a lot of the FNAF content we get is made by people who have a strong nostalgia for the old games and often thoroughly reject Security Breach. While I don't like Security Breach myself, it's good to see diversity of opinions amongst the fan game developers, and I'm excited to see what Ramanov comes up with. Junior's designs are still just so creepy, I can't imagine the game not having a solid amount of creepy stuff in it. Of course, I had to ask Ramanov if the fanverse had approached him about including Junior's. Ramanov declined to comment, which makes me suspect that they have, but that is just speculation on my part. Finally, I get a lot of people reaching out to me and expressing interest in developing fan games or asking me questions like, how do I get into the fanverse? I'm not a game developer though, so I can't really answer those questions. Ramanov is a fan game developer though, and he can answer those questions. Know your limitations. Start small and build your way up. You won't hit it off with your first game. Ramanov himself explained that he had developed many games over the years. Surely, the experience obtained from making them was instrumental in setting a project like Juniors into motion. Start small. Incredibly talented, popular creators like Baddington and even Martin Walls both attempted to make fan games at one point, only to ultimately cancel them when they realized that they were too ambitious. They then reworked their ideas into projects they were able to get done, and only because of that do we have Baddington and Martin Wall's excellent content today. I think everyone would do well to know their own limitations and cater their projects to their individual strengths. Ambition has destroyed many a fan game, and it's promising to see that Ramanov has a clear, realistic goal in mind with Juniors. Check out Juniors on Game Jolt. The game is set to drop this summer, and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to stream it. Actually, I've been streaming a lot lately here on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed, and if you catch me while I'm live, come say hi. I've also activated channel memberships, which are a way for you to support my channel and the content that I make. It is, of course, completely voluntary, but you get access to a couple of little perks, as well as a members-only chat in my Discord. Thanks so much to all of the people who have become members so far. It still blows my mind that anyone would elect to support my channel like this, and I cannot tell you how appreciative I am. As always, thanks for watching.